Welcome back. We're proud to be celebrating 500 episodes of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with a special live edition from our nation's capital. Joining me now to talk about public lands and the effort to defend grazing rights is Marcy, Marcy Schloop, Associate Director for the Public Lands Council, and Kevin Kester. He's NCBA's Vice President and a California rancher. Thank you both for joining us this evening. Thank Marcy, you. let's start with you. And uh, why don't you just inform folks uh, what public lands are and why they're so important to the United States beef cattle industry? Well, public lands are a vital component to the beef industry, especially in the West, with 40% of the nation's cattle herd spending some time on those public lands. Mm -hmm. Our public lands ranchers own about 120 million acres of their own private land, and at the same time manage about 250 million acres of public lands. Mm -hmm. More broadly, uh, because public lands are so easily regulated, we find ourselves to be kind of a laboratory or a testing ground for new regulations and policies. But more importantly, we, we also see that, that those regulations and those policies, they filter out onto the private lands and affect uh, public lands ranchers and private land ranchers alike, the, the entire industry as a whole. And I know one of the policies we talk a lot about on this show is the Endangered Species Act. Uh, can you tell folks what reforms you think need to be made and, and what is the political outlook going forward on that issue? The simple fact is that the Endangered Species Act is broken and has failed with, with only 1.4% of the listed species ever being deemed recovered under the act. Um, these species are being listed at such a rate and these listing petitions are coming in so fervently that all the Fish and Wildlife Service has time to do is evaluate these petitions, make their listing determinations, only to turn around and have to defend those those decisions in court when what they should be able to do is develop um, a comprehensive recovery plan and implement measurable benchmarks for recovery that would lead to the eventual delisting of those species and that's not happening right now so these are changes that PLC and NCBA continue to advocate for and will continue to advocate for with the new administration and the next Congress. And Kevin I know a lot of Western ranchers like yourself are very familiar with uh, the Endangered Species Act but I guess the question is do you see something like that impacting producers all across the country or is this only focused on Western ranchers? No oh, absolutely there's a huge danger of this spreading across the country. We've dealt with it for years, specifically myself in California. We've had it for a long time on different listings, but uh, the Upper Plains folks with the lesser uh, uh, chicken being uh, potentially listed there mm -hmm. felt some of the potential effects, but now there's talk of the monarch butterfly and bees potentially being listed. Can you imagine across the country the restrictions and loss of property rights if either one of those two species were ever to be listed? It would affect the way we do business. So we need to take a look at the Dangerous Species Act and get some reform. It's been more than 25 years since anything's been touched upon on the ESA, and we need to do something about it. You know, another issue is the Antiquities Act and, and the millions of acres that have literally been locked up. Uh, from, from ranchers all across the United States because of the Antiquities Act. What, in your opinion, type of reform needs to be made there, Kevin? Well, uh, number one, it's uh, an act that's been in existence since 1906, and it can, uh, monuments can be put into effect by presidential proclamation with no oversight from Congress or anybody else. So um, there's millions of acres uh, that have been abused by overreach of power from this current administration, the Obama administration, is an example and so what we need to do for reform is there's been several bills in the current Congress we need to carry them over to the new Congress and enact them where there's congressional oversight and authority as well as state oversight and authority to help uh, get rid of this abuse. Yeah. I want to ask one other question. Uh, you know, Marcy mentioned some of the things uh, relative to endangered species like the sage grouse and Kevin um, you and I both know that ranchers are already doing some really innovative things to protect the sage grouse themselves. Can you tell folks uh, about some of those things that ranchers are implementing themselves, either one of you? Go ahead, Marcy. If you... Well, uh, there's been some uh, uh, negotiated plans formed yeah. on, on the greater sage grouse, and okay. so um, unfortunately, I think the negotiated settlements uh, are going to create some issues also because. They are. Um, yeah it's going to be very costly to implement those reforms and so as the senator was saying earlier in the program we need to go back and revisit that and uh, get a better solution. 
Now, there's not many ranchers that have the 1940s pickup truck that he was talking, and we probably need a reformed Endangered Species Act. Would you agree? Absolutely. With the sage grouse alone, we have seen uh, through programs like the Sage Grouse Initiative through NRCS that we've seen a 63% increase in the sage grouse population mm. already. So we need to let these ranchers continue doing what they're doing, let the states lead these efforts, yeah. because obviously what they're doing is working. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you both for joining us this evening and uh, continue the fight, please. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now, as cattle producers know very well, protecting the business climate for the industry often means defending against government overreach. You can help by becoming an NCBA member. Call toll-free 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit the website beefusa.org.